What was Zach here? Some scholars say that smoking is haram. I'd like to know what's your opinion. And does smoking invalidate the fast? As far as smoking is concerned, several years before, when science had an advance that far, most of the scholars used to say that smoking is makru. Based on the hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which mentioned Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, in the book of Adhan, hadith number 855, where the Prophet said that anyone who eats garlic or onion, they should stay away from us and stay away from the mosque. The Prophet said that, you know, don't come to the mosque after having garlic or onion because there's bad breath. When you're smoking, the breath is worse than onion or garlic. So based on this hadith, therefore garlic and onion doesn't become haram, it becomes makru. So based on this hadith, scholars give the fatwa that smoking is makru. But now, after science has advanced, we have come to know that smoking is nothing but it's a slow poisoning. Tobacco in any form, whether in smoking, cigarettes, whether beedi, whether tobacco in hookah, whether chewing tobacco, all forms of tobacco contain nicotine and tar. And we know it's nothing but slow poisoning. That is the reason most of the non-Muslims also, they agree that smoking is haram. Not only the Muslim world, even the non-Muslims. That is the reason they put a statutory warning on the cigarette packs. They put a statutory warning saying cigarette smoking is injurious to health. Or in some countries, it mentioned general surgeon's warning or surgeon general's warning. Smoking is injurious to health. And anyone gives the ad, whether in newspaper, in the magazine or television, it is compulsory that they have to highlight the statement, smoking is injurious to health. So I'm talking about the Muslim world. Even the non-Muslim world agrees that smoking is nothing but slow poisoning. And today, according to statistics, the World Health Organization says that every year, more than 4 million people die only because of smoking. And if you count the other forms of tobacco, it will be much more. And today, medical science tells us, and even I had learned when I was doing my medicine in the medical college, that more than 90% of the lung cancer deaths are only due to smoking, whether cigarette or BD or whatever it is. 25% of the cardiovascular deaths are only because of smoking. 70 to 75% of bronchitis and related deaths are only because of smoking. Smoking is nothing but slow poisoning. It blackens your lips, blackens your gums, your fingertips, it damages your lips, it damages your esophagus, it damages your stomach, and it can cause constipation, it can cause loss of appetite, it can cause loss of libido, your sexual power gets suppressed, it can cause immunity to the drugs you take, and it reduces the defense of your body. And you can only give a talk on why smoking is haram. And I've given a talk on dry tea laws in Islam, and I've covered this topic in detail. Time doesn't permit me here. But based on all these various research, there are today more than 400 fatwas. The majority of the scholars, they agree that smoking is haram, and all form of tobacco is haram. There may be certain scholars of certain countries, including this country where I come from, India. They say it is makhru yet. But most of the scholars, otherwise, throughout the world, Majority of them, they agree that smoking is haram. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse 157, that you follow the prophet, the unlettered prophet who's mentioned in your law and scriptures. And further it says that this prophet asks you to do things which are good for you, tayyab for you. So take what he gives it to you, what is lawful and good. And he prohibits things which are khabis, things which are unlawful, things which are bad for you. So what a prophet gives? What he gives you which is good, take, and he prohibits you things which are khabis, unlawful, you have to abstain from it. This is alone. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqara, chapter number 2, verse 195, make not your own hands the cause of your own destruction, indicating that do not kill your own self. Because smoking is nothing but slow poisoning, it comes under this category, something like suicide. Slow poisoning, every puff you take, you reduce your life. So based on this, there are more than 400 fatwas saying that smoking is haram. And furthermore, this is one of the major reasons why it's haram. 
Furthermore, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 31, eat and drink, but do not be extravagant. Allah says in Surah Isra, chapter number 70, verse number 26, 27, that do not be extravagant, do not be a spendthrift. For verily, a person who is a spendthrift is a brother of the Satan, is a brother of the devil. And we know that when we smoke, it's nothing but extravagance. It's nothing but taking a pound note or a few pounds or taking a dollar note, the green dollar bill or a pound and lighting up with fire. When we smoke, when we light the cigarette, it's nothing but burning money, whether it be rupees, whether it be dollars, whether it be pounds, whether it be riyas, it's nothing but extravagance which is haram in Islam. And you can give a list of reasons why it's haram. But just to cut it short, one more reason, that you cannot harm your own neighbor. You cannot harm your own brother. And in smoking, when you exhale out the smoke, it causes more damage to your neighbor. Passive smoking is more dangerous than active smoking. When the person who smokes, when he exhales out, if the person who's a neighbor inhales the smoke, it causes more damage to him than the person who smokes. That's the reason many countries like Singapore, etc., they've banned smoking in public places. In your personal house, you can do it. In public places, in government places, smoking has been banned. So based on this, it's haram. So smoking is haram.